Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the sophomore album from Temples called Volcano. You know, if I were to characterize nostalgia among most music critics, I'd say most that it's kind of inconsistent. We appreciate acts that pay tribute to the past, but we don't like them sounding too close to that sound or they just become imitators. We like winking references to a point. We tend to love musical subversions and deconstructions of certain antiquated genres and styles, often at the expense of the song's structures and sounds and production style themselves, but if an act earnestly tempers and refines certain similar sounds and material, they're just plainly stuck in the past. Unless, of course, it happens to be a sound that we like, and then we throw all the praise in the world at them. And look, I'm not going to say that I'm totally immune to these trends, but if you want to see a band that divides a lot of music critics on this line, it would be the UK psychedelic band Temples. Their debut album Sun Structures in 2014 was very plain in its worship of mid to late 60s psychedelic pop, and yet it divided a lot of critics, a significant chunk saying that they weren't really doing all that much to differentiate themselves from their forebears. And on the surface, I would mostly agree with that. If you're fond of that particular sound, they're an easy sell, they seem to imitate it well, and yet it was the details and the writing and the thicker punch of their production that pushed up that debut up several notches for me. Yeah, I'll say it, Sun Structures by Temples is one of my favorite albums of 2014, and I've revisited it since, it holds up. And yeah, I can see the callbacks to T-Rex and the birds, but there was enough between the lines and the melodic compositions and the writing to make these songs feel distinct and unique and new. You could make disparaging comparisons to Foxygen or Tame Impala all day, but Temples knew how to structure of hooks and cohesive songs and albums unlike Foxygen, and unlike Kevin Parker, they could write lyrics that weren't utterly insufferable. But now we've got that follow-up three years later. And while a good retro interpretation can have a lot of mileage on a debut album, following it up on your software album and keeping things unique and interesting, that's a lot tougher. And yet, with all that in mind, I still had really, really high expectations for Volcano, even despite critical reviews that were, once again, all over the map. But okay, did Temples manage to stick the landing for me with Volcano? Well, it was a peculiar lesson, that's for damn sure, because you can tell that Temples has shifted and updated their sound, enough to the point where instead of early psychedelic rock comparisons, they're leaning a lot closer in line with the more pop-leaning psychedelic textures you might hear with acts like Modern Tame Impala or MGMT. And yet again, I keep going back to the fundamentals here in the melodic composition and the songwriting, and it's hard for me to deny that Temples are synthesizing a brand of psychedelia that I find ridiculously catchy, strikingly well-written, and easily able to hold their own against more famous or critically acclaimed brethren, if not surpassing them. And if I'm being completely honest with myself, I'd probably put this on par with their debut, but in a very different way. In other words, I'd probably consider this one of the best albums that I've heard thus far in 2017. And since I've given so much praise to those fundamentals, let's start there. Now, as I've said too many times on the show, do you even really count? One of my biggest frustrations with modern and particularly mainstream pop is a lack of focus on distinctive instrumental melodies that differentiate more than the vocal line, of which they've tried to mask by drowning everything in reverb in order to intensify the atmosphere and obscure how hollow it really all feels and how much you won't remember any of it. Temples, on the other hand, almost seems to overcompensate for that by placing their main melody line front and center on nearly every single song. Whether it be the synth or the guitar, they want it front and center, and then backed up with enough bass thrumming in the background or rhythm guitar to really punch up that groove. Take the flattened chunks of rhythm guitar that hold the bright and yet slightly off-kilter and oily main synth that opens up certainty, that occasionally resurfaces as added melodic accents. Even if you think it's kind of garish, which, yeah, I do, along with the squealing layers of compressed guitar that hold the main melody of Born into the Sunset against the watery bass and drum line, which has a wonky sort of drippy Beach Boys-esque psychedelic texture, which yes, is a compliment, but these are still tunes that you would recognize and remember no matter how garish they are, and the band shows enough complexity to evolve them in fascinating ways, either through tempo or key changes. And those are arguably the melodies that I like the least on this album, the tinny guitars that play off the flute-like keys and organ and I Wanna Be Your Mirror 
better. They bring in some great harmonic interplay that builds up a buzzy low end glassy keys and a really twisted bass progression on the verses. The bass guitar needs to get a lot of credit on this album for some of the bass harmonies. The klaxon like howls that drive the aggressive grooves of clear air with a faster tempo that twists and compressing us the synths. The more grandiose primary melody that holds on celebration off waves of glossy synth with plenty of spacey flutters and especially the, the cascading bounce of mystery of pop. Especially when the bass and the hand claps come in for one of the most elastic and sticky hooks you'll hear in 2017. Hell, even on songs that might seem more conventional on the surface, you wind up with melodic lines that refuse to break for me. On both Oh the Savior and In My Pocket, they start off a little bit more conventional with acoustic guitar, but in both cases, it's not long before the big synth layers or the big guitar-driven hooks break through. And it's not saying this album can't ease back or take more of a break either. How would you like to go? It opts for a more languid, atmospheric approach, soaked in reverb and almost reminding me of the thrumming, noisy potency of an old Flaming Lips song and the jangling bounce of the closer, Stranger Be Forgotten. It's got a certain bright swell before the gallop of the percussion comes in on the hook and it works quite well, surprisingly well for an upbeat closer. But the key word here is scope. Temples have always had a knack for psychedelic rock that feels big and cavernous. But when Sun Structures, when it played coy with their watery textures and the overdubs, and then just soaked everything in reverb with a fair amount to accentuate a lot of the bombast, Volcano is intentionally more dense, using meteor synths to contribute layers of harmony to the main melody lines to intensify that heady whirl of psychedelia. And what's telling is how the vocals are layered. From man James Edward Bagshaw, he freely admitted that on the debut album, he buried more of his vocals due to a guarded insecurity with a lot of his delivery. He didn't think it was all that good. But on this album, he opts for higher tones and falsetto, and it comes through a lot cleaner. And yet, if I were to find a point of contention, it would probably be here. Not that he's a bad singer without poise and presence. He's got both these things. But it's a vocal tone that wears a lot of its influences on its sleeve across many eras of psychedelic rock. And there's a part of me that misses the wry balance that came through in the debut in his mid to low range. I wish he used a little bit more of that throughout this album, if only for a little bit more diversity. And yet, what's all the more frustrating is that I can see people dismissing Temples as not all that original based upon not particularly remarkable vocals alone. Good or even great melodies, to be sure, catchy as hell. But really, what makes this guy interesting or comparable to so many other high-pitched psychedelic crooners? Well, this is where we get into the lyrical content and where Temples have always been a lot more compelling than many have given them credit. Now, what I've always liked about Temples is that they've seemed keenly self-aware of the sound they are making and how it is viewed by much of the audience and the mainstream public. Indeed, much of Sun Structure saw them walking that very thin line between psychedelic madness and maintaining control of their almost ruthless compositional efficiency and intricacy. And yet on Volcano, a fair amount of the meta text to that previous album becomes outright text here, as so much of this album seems to directly address Temples' increasingly strange place in modern indie and psychedelic pop rock, especially given that while they have certainly evolved and expanded their sound, there's proof of that on this album, due to their production choices and their pickups and their tones, they are unfortunately going to be treated by a lot of less discerning individuals as more of a throwback. And yet, despite how oblique a lot of the writing style can be, this is psychedelic rock after all, I really do like how methodical temples are in deconstructing these arguments and ideas, and they don't really shy away from including themselves in the framing. Take All Join In, where as much as they deride those chasing towards a very much dying future, they are also very much aware that their approach could be felt as stuck in the past, not evolving. Noted with a detachment that is bemused and really very British. That comes through here quite a lot. And yet it's that keen double-edged insight that runs through all of their songs. From the self-serving, reflective deception of nostalgic acts that on I Wanna Be Your Mirror, to the manic chase of fresh ideas that might seem kind of insane on Oh The Savior. A drive that seems to leave temples more perplexed than outright annoyed or angry, with songs like In My Pocket seeming to imply that they might be the odd ones especially highlighting, correctly, that so much of psychedelia can feel like a little masturbatory, especially as the insight that seems to collapse once they get a handle on the ideas, as is pointed out on Celebration. It's one of the reasons why I really do love Mystery of Pop, where they explore modern culture's flighty fascination with modern pop trends that they know are kind of empty and may not even be their stories to tell, but they can captivate so many people nonetheless. You have to be in the know. And the many references to David Bowie on the song are very telling, 
mind because Bowie never scorned pop so much as he realized and leveraged its populist power, something that Temples finds utterly fascinating. Maybe not for them, but fascinating all the same. Indeed, their greatest venom on this album is leveled on Roman godlike man, which is less about any specific political figure than it is about political theater. Men who spout empty ideologues in order to restage grand empire traditions, and yet Temple sees the power that comes in such theater nonetheless, and the album is capped off with Strange or Be Forgotten, which focuses on, on especially for artists, there is a constant quest for a unique legacy, even if it means embracing something that doesn't really represent their true passion and artistic path. And again, it's not passing judgment so much as just exploring the case, and research Temple's commitment to their own path, albeit with plenty of curiosity towards all those other paths that they might go down in the future, you never know. In other words, the more that I analyze this record beyond just the ridiculously catchy melodies and the rich harmonies and the production quirks that feel as modern as anything Tame and Paula are doing, but with far more poise and insightful writing, the more I realize I kind of really love this. Volcano is the natural evolution from Sun Structures, very much a deconstructionist take on a lot of modern indie rock and psychedelic rock trends, but one that is refreshingly self-aware, unpretentious, and strikingly nuanced. And that's before you pair it with some of the more catchy music that you'll probably hear this year. In short, I think I dug this about as much as I like Sun Structures, if not a little bit more, which means I'm giving it a light 9 out of 10 and for sure recommendation, especially if you're looking for some phenomenally rich psychedelic music that's as pyrotechnic as its namesake. Definitely check this one out. I promise you will not regret it. It's kind of awesome. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Man, I am so thrilled I got a record coming up on my schedule that I loved as much as I did with this one. Really, it's so freaking catchy. And some of the tunes here are just so good, and the writing really worked for me. But beyond that, if you guys actually want to get this album, and I highly recommend you do, a link is in the description down there below. And if you guys want to talk about how you'd rate it, the poll is right there. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to get involved in my schedule, the link right there is to my Patreon. Where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week you guys get to add records to my schedule in the higher Patreon tiers. So, for all these people who keep sending me albums to review, there's an easy option to get in on the system. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.